Here are three tips and tricks in Fusion 360 that you should learn sooner rather than later. Let's learn it in less than five minutes. The first tip we're going to learn is how to copy components efficiently. Say for example, you have a piece of sheet metal like this, where we have hundreds of holes, random holes, that we need to mate an M4 flathead screw to, for example. Well, how can we do so efficiently? First, I'm gonna create all of our holes. Secondly, I'm going to import these screws. So let's activate our hardware folder first of all. And go to McMaster Car and find our screw. If we expand our folder in our browser for hardware, there we can see our screw that we just imported. So how can we mate it to all of these as efficiently as possible? Well, the way that we might be familiar with is to joint our individual screw here to the first hole. We'll have to flip it. And then we would have to right click, copy, paste, and do the same thing over and over and over again. Well, that is tedious. That would take a very long time. And again, we don't have a ton of holes right here, but say we did have a hundred or more. Well, what's the most efficient way? Let's just undo that. Let's go up to assemble and select duplicate with joints. There we select our component. And now we start snapping that component to every single point on our piece of sheet metal that we'd like another screw to mate with our part. You can see a little shortcut is I'll click the face of the sheet metal and it will snap to the center of our hole very quickly. And there we have a very easy way to copy components and mate them to a parent part simply and efficiently. For our next tip, let's talk about how to dimension a diameter within a 2D sketch. Say for example, we have a part like this, which eventually will be revolved into a cylindrical part like that. Go back to our sketch. In this instance, we would definitely dimension all of our Z dimensions using a standard dimensioning method. That of pressing D, selecting our dimension, and there we go, 20 mils. But as explained in previous tutorials from the Learn It channel, if possible, we can design all of our sketching within quadrant one, and then revolve it or mirror the elements of that drawing into other quadrants of our sketch. For example, we're going to revolve this closed profile from quadrant one into quadrant two. So this actually is a diameter. Well, all of these are diameters. So usually what we do is press D for dimension, select our center axis, click that, and then just take the diameter that we would like and divide it by two to create this dimension. But there's a better way. Let's delete that. Let's press D for dimension. Let's go over to our center axis and the diameter that we would like to dimension, and then press right click diameter dimension. And there we have it. We can just simply specify it as 95 millimeters for our diameter. And there is our part dimensioned. Our third tip is how to dimension points of tangency. So usually when we have two arcs or two circles, if we press D and select any point on our circle and the second one, well, it will dimension from our center points. But if we want to measure from its points of tangency, we might be tempted to do a bunch of calculations with our diameter of our circle divided by two, but there's a much easier way. If we press D and then right click, there's circle arc tangent. We can just pick our points on our circles and you can see no matter where I put my mouse, it will select the point of tangency or the closest point of our circle to the other circle. Now, if I move over to the opposite half of the circle, well, there it will select that point of tangency as well. But if we want to select that, there we have it. Now, if we want to actually specify a dimension from the center point to a point of tangency, say for example, down here on this arc, well, we can press D for dimension, select our circle, and then right click, pick circle arc tangent, and then we can pick our other element and specify a dimension. If you've benefited from this tutorial, please consider liking and subscribing. If you've loved it, then please consider buying us a coffee or becoming a patron. Looking forward to seeing you in the next tutorial with the Learn It channel.